Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video I'm going to explain the difference between planes of movement and axis of movement in three simple steps. And if you stay until the very end then I have a video for you and a special download as well. Learning point number one, planes of movement. So the first place to start when learning the difference between them is to clarify each. So we're going to start with planes of movement. Now just see planes of movement as groups of movement. So groups of types of movement that we do in our body. Now we have three different types or three different planes of movement. They are sagittal plane, transverse plane and frontal plane. Now it's important to know the difference of these, not only for your exam, but before we head on towards axis of movement. So if you're not really sure what those are, then click the link above to be able to watch another video whereby I really outline in a lot of detail about what each of those planes of movement are. So make sure you're aware of those before we really dive into axis of movement. So if you're not quite sure on that, click that link and you'll be able to go straight away and watch that planes of movement video. Learning point number two, axis of movement. So you know about planes of movement, axis of movement is very different in its description, even though it's explaining the same type of movement. So, axis of movement, like we have an axis that the earth spins around, or imagine a jewelry box dancer, ballerina, that you open up the jewelry box and she's sat on a spike and she literally spins around. That spike is the axis of movement. Now in our body, when we move, our joints move around this invisible straight line. And that invisible straight line is the axis of movement. That's what we're talking about. So if I was to do a bicep curl, then I have a invisible line going through my joint in the to allow the position of the bicep curl to happen. If I was going to do a lateral raise, I have this invisible line going from the front to the back of my joint that the joint moves around. It's kind of like having a kebab stick. And if I wanted to move my joint without using my muscles, I would just rotate my kebab stick around in that joint to allow that movement to happen. And that's essentially what the axis of movement is. Learning point number three, do they relate? Planes of movement and axis of movement 100% do relate. They relate to the same categories of actions and joint movements that we have. So for example, all sagittal plane movements, which will include things like a bicep curl, a squat, a lunge, all those types of actions move around an axis that is medial lateral axis of movement. Now that means medial being the inside, lateral being the outside, it's moving side to side as I face you in that sort of direction. So that's the way that the axis is gonna be in order to allow that sagittal movement to happen. Similarly, all frontal plane movements like a lateral raise or a lateral lunge those types of actions are all gonna happen in an anterior-posterior axis of movement. So the anterior-posterior means anterior the front, posterior the back. So this line, this straight line, this axis is gonna go from the shoulder, so if on a lateral raise, it's gonna go from the front to the back to allow that movement to happen around that straight line. Remember, that's what axis of movement means. Then, also the case for transverse. So transverse plane movements all happen around a longitudinal axis. So transverse is going to be movements like rotation or even sort of the internal external rotation of an arm. So the longitudinal axis is going to run through that joint that's moving. So lengthways, longitudinal. So for a spinal twist, imagine it going all the way down through the middle like that ballerina on a spike and then you're twisting around. For internal external rotation of the arm, it's gonna follow that arm and then you'll be able to twist in and out. So that longitudinal axis is in line with transverse plane of movement. Whew. So now that you know how these are paired and you can see it happening and in motion, Let's test you and see how you get on with this mock question.
A frontal raise action occurs around what axis of movement? Is it A, frontal, B, anterior posterior, C, sagittal, or D, medial lateral? So take your time to answer this question. And what you need to do is really read the question, read what it's asking of you, and look through those possible answers. Really think about what we've spoken about in relation to planes of movement and axes of movement already. Pause the video if you need a little bit of extra time. And then using the comments boxes below, just place your answer in there. And it's a really good way of just being able for us to see how that information is sinking in. So don't worry if you didn't get it correct. It's absolutely fine. So just pause the video now if you need a bit of extra time. The answer to this question is D, medial lateral. Now, the way that people often get this one confused is because the wording frontal is in the question when it talks about a frontal raise. Now, remember, a frontal raise action is bringing the arm up in front. Now, as you bring it up in front, you're moving around that medial lateral axis of movement. And that's what the question is asking for. And remember, if you want to find out more about planes of movement, then watch the suggested video at the end of this video. And I'll take you through all the different exercises that can happen and occur in each plane of movement. And also a couple of little tricks and memory hacks to help you remember it for exam day. If you like this video, make sure you hit the little thumbs up button, subscribe and also share with your friends. Any comments you wish to leave below and questions, we more than welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.